Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. What an amazing, amazing time that was, amen, to get to be in the house of the Lord together with you and to celebrate Mother's Day, to celebrate a risen Savior and all those things tied in together, amen. One thing about it, I guess since Patrick did a little bit of preaching, I'm going to have to do a little bit of singing, amen. Really, you don't want that, I promise, so I won't do any of that. Hey, it's time for our kids, to, for Children's Church, but we're going to do something a little bit differently, so hold on, kids, just one second. Today, we're going to be our first day back for having Children's Church, but th- today we're going to include up to the sixth grade, so anybody kindergarten through sixth grade, we're also going to, because you're going to be meeting right up above us here, we're going to have all of our kids first through uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, if you will join us right over here, Miss Ara is here, so kids, come on down front, we're not going out the back way. Uh, they're going to be coming down to the front here, so they'll be taking you out over here on uh, the, the south door. So kids, come on down. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. It's going to be a lot of fun. You'll have a great time. Now, parents, let me also tell you something that's going to be a little bit differently on the pickup. Before, what we usually do is just allow the kids to come running in. We're not going to do that anymore. So after the service today for the preschool, they'll still be picked up at the preschool. The kids will be picked up at the, in the fellowship hall right across out the t- double doors and across the hallways. You'll see the, the uh, uh, fellowship hall, and they will be there after the service for you to pick up, okay? So they won't be running back in here. They'll all be going out uh, toward, and you'll be meeting them in the fellowship hall. They'll have them there, and you'll be able to, to get them and to take them home with you. And everyone said amen, all right? So it's good to see that many kids here, and and it's exciting. And today we're going to be looking at God's expectations. If you will, God's expectations of parents, uh, for us. What what does God expect of us? Now, whenever we read this text, you're going to say, now, wait a minute, that sounds more like the kids. And, and it is for the kids. It is something that, that the kids should know. And so for the, the, the students now, it's not, the kids are all gone. For the students, it's for them. It's for the kids. But what I want to do today is I want to look at it in the perspective of what does God expect us as parents and adults to expect from our kids. He wants us to expect this from them. And then also some things from us. So if you have your Bibles, look in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to be looking at verses 1, 2, and 3, and we're going to be looking at God's command for us. So if you would, and if you're able to, would you stand in honor of reading God's word this morning? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. The Bible tells us here, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us here uh, to have this time of worship. Father, just to sing praises to you and now to receive your word. God, thank you for separating that veil, allowing us to come to you. And Lord, that you can then be in us. And so today as we... As we continue on here, Lord, might your spirit breathe truth to us. And Father, I pray that the words I'm about to say will not be my words. I pray, Father, they'll be yours. I pray that the message that I I have here today is not one I planned, but one that you planned for me. And that, Father, the response would be as you desire for it to be. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, Today on Mother's Day, we're looking at at our scripture text from, again, the side of the parent. Because this is an important message. I believe, my friends, this is an important message for our day and time. For the times that we're living in. For the things that the world is trying to lay out there for us. For the, the time that the world is trying to call us, even as the church, but as families, into a direction that I believe God had never intended the families to go into. And so we look at this text, and a couple things that I want to bring out. First one is to obey your parents in the Lord. Now, many of you would say, okay, now wait a minute. That's something you should have said about 20 minutes ago when the kids were, when my kid was in here. That way I could say, hey, you know, the pastor said, preacher said in church today, you're supposed to obey me. So many of you say, well, you should have said that, but hey, they're going to hear that themselves. Amen. But what I want to do is look at the idea of what we're supposed to do as parents, 
But also as adults, how do we view this? Because listen to me, I want you to understand that God calls us to expect from our kids, expect from our children to them, for them to obey. And this is something, again, for the kids to do. Because, and I'm going to get to it in just a little bit, that as adults, we, we're not held under this part. But this the whole sermon is not just for the kids. Because later we're going to look and see what is our part of this. But for the first part, it is for the kids because, listen to me, there's going to come a point that we are not going to be held under the rule to obey our parents. Amen? There's going to come this time that we should be on our own and that the kids, our kids, should be also on their own. But this idea of obey as a meaning is to conform or to comply with. So it's not an idea of just going along, but it is conforming to the understanding, to follow commands or guidance of. So this is what the kids ought to do. But parents, can I say, and adults, can I say to you, this is what God expects us to expect from them. And what I mean by that is I think that we're living in a time the expectations are not there. The expectation is just not like that. As a matter of fact, we now offer up justifications for allowing our kids or other kids to not obey us because we come in and say, oh, they're experiencing their terrible twos or terrible threes or terrible fives or they're now teenagers. And whole oh, blessing, that's a whole nother level of stuff, Amen. But we give them, re- well, they're just teenagers. That's what, they're, that's what they do. Then we go on and we, we always make an excuse for why we're not expecting our kids to obey. Why we don't expect them to comply or to conform. Not with society, listen to me, but that they conform to our rules, to what we have established by God when he says this is what you ought to expect from your kids. Now the idea is as implications and I put on your screen here it has the implications of completely falling under the authority and jurisdiction of another person. This completely means absolute, not having any reasons not to. That listen to me, the, the child is supposed to completely obey. That'd been a good place for an amen, but amen. all right. The, the kids are called to completely obey, not just half-heartedly. Again, we can't start making reasons and excuses as to why they're doing what they're doing. Because it says to completely fall under the, the authority and jurisdiction of another person. Now, who is that other person? The parents. The parents. Because what we look at is something that I've heard before is the Duke of Windsor once said, the thing that impresses me the most about America is the way the parents obey their kids. That it's basically the kids run the family. What the kid wants, how the kid wants, uh, if the kid will or if the kid won't. And he says, it is amazing to me how somehow we've gotten the order out of, uh, out, gotten the jurisdiction out of order. That it's what the kids are wanting more than what the parents are asking. And so we look and we see here, it is again that idea of obedience. Because we've got to th- think about this, my friend. It's part of a biblical order. Now, I don't mean a biblical mandate. Now, the obey your children, expect your children is a, a biblical mandate. It's not a suggestion. It's what God says. But there is an order that God has placed. There is a structure, if you will, and this is part of that structure. He didn't say, parents, obey your kids because they're the ones in authority. He says, kids, obey your parents because guess what? Who's in charge? The parents are. That's what he says. The adults should be the ones in control here. Because God has placed the leadership on position to the parents. We're the leaders. There's a reason why we, that we don't let kids do certain things. Because they can't reason it out. So he says, listen, the order is this. You as parents, we as adults, we're in that leadership position. And one thing that I want you to understand about this, that the society is trying to to take away from us, is folks, listen, they are yours. Your kids are yours. They're not mine. They're not the government's. 
They're yours. But the society is trying to tell us that the parent doesn't really have the authority that they should be having. As a matter of fact, we're, we're having rules passed even in the school systems and, and in our jurisdictions of government that the parent doesn't have to know everything that's going on with the child, that the child has rights to privacy and to make their own decisions. Going to another adult, telling them what they need and letting that adult then make the decision for them. Folks, can I tell you that that is not God? That is not of God. The parent should always, listen to me, I'll say it again. The parent should always, always, always know what's going on in their child's lives. And the parent, not the government, not the school, not the church, not another individual should be the ones to make the decision for their child. Because the child is yours. That's part of the order that God has placed in all of this stuff. And so we look and we see uh, the pastor, Stephen uh, Cole, said this. It would seem as if we've been influenced by the world psychology that tells us, parents, cater to your child's every whim and don't do anything to stifle his or her self-esteem or warp his or her fragile, <laughs> fragile personality. That makes me laugh because I think back to when I was a kid oh my my mom and my dad some but my mom especially I'm telling you she warped my sensitive personality many times <laughs> I know that may shock y'all that your pastor would need to have his personality warped every now and then as a kid but I did but yet we're now living in that to where it says you don't have a right as a parent. You don't have a right as an adult. Let the child express themselves. Hey, I tried that once. Once. To my mom. Wow. I learned real quick, self-expression wasn't, wasn't acceptable in the Geisha's household when I was a little kid. My mom, now this may offend some of y'all, but my mom, once I expressed myself, she put me in what we called, or I called, the circle of, of death. And what that was is my mom, with her left hand, grabbed my left hand and held on to it. With her right hand, she took an object of her choosing and began to warp my personality and I would run in a circle high-stepping it. My mom did not let me out of that circle for a little bit. Now, I know many of you are going, to, how dare she? My mom knew something that many of us have begun to forget. There is a role in of authority. And that authority has to be honored in order for discipline and structure not to be maintained just in the family, but can I tell you, it is also there to be maintained in society. For if we fail to hold that structure in the family... Society will begin to crumble because our society is built upon family and our family is built upon structure that God placed. Not us, not me because I'm an adult now, but because God has said this is how it's going to work. They are yours, not mine, not the government's. And I want you to understand, God holds us as parents accountable for our children's physical and spiritual well-being. It's incumbent upon us. God has placed the responsibility not just of, our, of their physical well-being, but can I tell you, God has placed upon us as parents and us as an adult and us as a church to basically be held accountable for the well-being of our children's spiritual well-being. Because I want you to know, God will not have me as a, as a dad, God will not have me as a pastor stand before him and give an account for how many awards my daughters won or how many awards your kids win. 
in our church. God will not hold me accountable as a dad for how many scholarships my daughter got. What he's going to hold me accountable for is what I did as their dad during the time of them being under my authority. What did I do to influence them to the Lord? Now, folks, listen to me. God does not take that role lightly for us. I'm going to be held. Now, my daughters had to make their own decisions, amen? That I'm not going to be held accountable for. But what I will be held accountable for is what influence did I give them? What role did I have in bringing them to Jesus? What role did I have in mentoring them? What role did I have in expectation of them to respect the structure that God placed on me? Not only as a dad, but listen, God is going to hold us accountable as a church as to what we do to bring children to Jesus. That's why we're doing the things that we do in our children's program. It's not just because we want something to do. It's because, listen, we as a church need to hold hold on to tightly and strongly what influence do we have on kids on students folks we stepped into that responsibility when we joined the church when I became a pastor when you became a Sunday school teacher when you became a director you stepped into that responsibility and God's going to hold us accountable for that what part did you play and he's going to hold us there but Jesus said Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Now you say, now wait a minute, I'm not going to keep them from it. But listen, that's not what Jesus was just talking about. He's not saying, are you just holding the door shut, but are you even opening the door for them? Are you giving them opportunities to be able to know about Jesus? Or are you saying, well, you know, that's a decision they're going to have to make. I'm going to let them make it, or or it's just not what we felt today. We just weren't feeling it today. So I'm going to close the door. Well, Pastor, I didn't close the door. I just didn't take it seriously. Jesus said, do not, do not forbid them to come to me. Open that door. Give them every opportunity to hear about Jesus. Give them every opportunity to be in the fellowship of, of people who think like they think. Don't forbid them. Well, I'm not forbidding them. If you don't do everything in your power to do that, guess what you're doing? You're forbidding them. Listen, you don't let them make a decision if they they take baths, I hope. Amen? You don't let them make a decision if they do their homework or not, I hope. You don't let them make decisions if they're going to go to bed at a respectful hour. I hope you don't. I hope you don't let them choose everything they eat for for their whole childhood life. I hope you have rules and establish things for them. Listen, if you're going to do that as a parent, why in heaven's name would you let them make decisions on Jesus? On whether they're a part of what goes on in the church? No. Because I promise you, My daughters, even as a pastor's daughters, they did not always thank me for making them be in church, did they, Martha? They didn't all say, oh, thank you, Father, for being a pastor and going to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and other things, and having us go, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, they went, I don't want to go. But I wanted to open the door. Jesus said that. That's not me. That's Jesus. Do not forbid them, but let them come to me. Parents should be encouraged to bring their children to Jesus at an early age and to teach them his ways. This is what we are to do. We as a church ought to give kids in our area, in Lawton, all the way around us. Folks, we ought to be drawing in kids. We ought to be drawing in students doing whatever we have to do to get them to come in to hear the name of Jesus so that they can make that decision. Forbid them not to come to me. It's part of the biblical order. And listen to me, I want to quickly go here. It's temporary. This obedience, this command of children, obey your parents. Parents expect your kids to obey you. It's temporary. The thing I'm finding out is, my friends, they grow up. Amen? And there comes a point that no longer are they held under my authority. 
There comes a point that our children are now on their own, that they make their own decisions. So I want you to know, it is temporary whether we like it or not. And my friends, can I tell you, as a dad with grown daughters, now it happens fast. They were here under my authority, then the next thing I know, they're not. One is now grown up and, and married. Got another man in her life, amen? Another one lives halfway around the world. The other one has a mind of her own, doesn't, even when she was under my authority. But they're no longer there. And man, it happened fast. And I no longer have that authority. And many of y'all know that, or you may not know, this may shock you, shock y'all at home. I, I kind of, I'm a kind of a control freak. I like being in control. Yeah, go ahead and say amen. It's all right. I hear it enough at my house. I know it's true. Amen. So one day I was talking about my girls and stuff, and my wife asked me, said, does it bother you? Does it drive you nuts that you can't control everything about them? I looked at her and I said, no, not really. It makes me feel bad for them, though. Because if they just let me, I could guide them really well. So it makes me feel bad. I could do so much better than they could if they'll just listen to me. Amen? But listen, that structure is there for a reason, but it's not there forever. We don't get to do that. We have but a very, very short time for our kids to be under that authority. Which then brings us to the second part very quickly. I just got a few minutes. Honor your parents. It goes from children, obey your parents, to now all of us honor our parents. It didn't say children obey, but it's, it's, it's children in the sense of we're kids. We're somebody's kids, amen? We're to honor the parents. Now, this honor means to assign a high value to or worth to them and an inward attitude of esteem for their position while being respectful in word or action. We are to honor our parents by the way we live. We are expecting our kids to honor us. We are expecting our kids to honor adults because it now shifts from a child's responsibility to all of us. And this is a responsibility till the day we die. The Greek word for honor means to revere to prize and to value. We should, even as adults, always, always revere our parents, to hold them up and, and to count them as a great prize and of great value to us. I want to say this very quickly. There's four actions of honoring that we should be doing. As in, any adult or a child, here's the way that we to honor our parents. First of all, be thankful for them. Be thankful for them, especially, especially, can I tell you now, especially if you still have them with you. Be thankful for them. Oh, you don't know my parents. No, I don't. But you do owe them one thing, because without them, you wouldn't be here. So be thankful for them. Be thankful for what they did. Be thankful for the sacrifices that they made for you. So we, to honor our parents, is to first and foremost, just be thankful for them. Second one is to treat them with respect. Treat them with respect. The way we talk to them, the way we talk about them. Treat them with respect. Because again, that's God's authority. That's God's way. That's God's structure, not mine. But then thirdly, is do more for them than expected. Go beyond what you should be doing. Do more for them than you ever dreamt that you should be doing. Because I promise you, they've done that. Man, I, I, I shared in the first service that, that with, with, with my, my dad and my mom, but many of you know how, how I grew up. If you don't, one day I'll, I'll be able to share my testimony with you. But I, I grew up... Uh, with parents who did not receive a high school education. Uh, my dad was injured early in his, in his young adult life and was not able to hold down uh, big jobs because of his deterioration on his back. And 
So, you know, we, as, as many of you know, I grew up just absolutely with nothing in my life. Grew up living in a, in a little barn that had car, old carpet we tore out of somebody else's house and threw it on the ground. That was, that was our floor. And we had walls that were just one big room with, uh, with different people's paneling. So we had, a, we had a smorgasbord of paneling. And we, we had no running water. Man, we, our, our toilets were in the back about 40 yards from the house. And th- that's, that's what we, no running water. And we, sometimes we didn't have a lot to eat. But, but I know here's, here's how I can still honor my dad. And here's how I still honor my mom. Because I knew that there was problems. Because my dad did far more than anything, anything that I ever thought he would, should have to do to make sure we had food on the table and that we had a little bit of money. The, as a matter of fact, what my dad used to do is my dad used to go, and, and even during the summer, Summers and winters, my dad would go to Henrietta to the landfill there, and what his job was, not paid job, but what he would what he would do, and I'd go with him, and my brothers would go with him sometimes. My dad would sit out in at the dump area, and what he would do is he'd direct people on where to go to to make sure they were putting the stuff in their brush would go over here, and uh, the other stuff would go here, trash over here. And in order for my dad to do that, what they allowed him to do and what they allowed us to do as a family at times, the, my brothers and I would go with him, is we would, once someone would throw away their trash, my dad, because he wanted to make sure that all six of us had a little bit of something, my dad would literally get down in the dump and start tearing open stuff, throwing out things, that, that iron and, and aluminum and things like that that he could take and sell. Now, folks, <laughs> that took a humbled man to do that, who loved his family, who would do that on a daily basis. And my mom would go and wait tables whenever she possibly could, doing anything she could to make just a little bit of money so we could have something. And so I sit here and I think about, do more for them than expect it? Are you kidding me? That should be something I would think about, not even have to think about doing. That I would do it because I know my dad spent cold days at the dump, hot days in the summer in northeast Oklahoma at that dump, digging around in other people's trash so he could find some aluminum or junk iron or whatever he could do to take and to sell. Folks, listen to me. Honor your parents because they've done stuff that you probably don't have a clue that they did to help take care of you. So when it now is time for us to honor our parents, are you kidding me? Shouldn't have to be told to do something. I do more. That's how we honor. And the last one is have a good attitude doing it. Have a good attitude doing it. Don't mumble and grumble and gripe. And say, God, thank you for my parents. Thank you for my grandparents. I'm going to honor them. And listen, my mom and dad, they're no longer here. They're not in heaven. But I want, I want to live even now in such a way that if they were sitting on those two chairs... Listening to me today, watching my life, how I deal with my wife, how I deal with my kids, how I deal with my church members that I love with all my heart, I would want them to look at me, even today at 57 years old, I'd want them to say, good job, son, proud of you, proud of you. Boy, that's honor. I want to honor my mom and dad until the day I die. And listen to me, the way we honor our parents, the way we expect our kids to obey, the way we obey, listen, can I tell you, that is exactly how we're going to do God. So if we're allowing our kids to disobey us, I'm here to tell you they're going to have a hard time obeying God. If, we're not, if they're not seeing us honor God in our lives, we're going to have a really hard time having them honor God in their lives. This is a responsibility given to us. On this Mother's Day weekend, I once even once said this. To put it bluntly, obedience can be taught or trained into an animal. You can teach an animal to obey. But honor only comes within 
based on an organism's normal moral choices. Oh, we can make people obey. We can make animals obey. But man, that honor is a whole different ballgame. That's why he says, of children, obey your parents. But to everyone, everyone, honor your father and mother. Honor them. Because as you honor them, that's how you honor me. How you teach your kids, that's what you're teaching them about me. So here today, as we get ready to close this service out, I'm going to ask the praise team to come on back up. But as we go into this time, this is, a, this is a time for us to respond. For you at home, it's a time for us to respond to what God is calling us in. And I, I want you to think about whatever God is speaking to you. Patrick said earlier about how th- th- that veil was, was torn and, and that, that we get to have a God living in us. I once heard Bart Millard describing this and he said I I sometimes think about how awesome it's going to be that I'll get to be in heaven one day and I want to I want I want to talk to I want to talk to Moses and I want to see how what it was like to be able to do all these things that Moses did to raise your hands and part the Red Sea to tap a rock and water come out to lead these people I want I want to talk to the prophets and I want to see what it was like to be able to 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 speak of these things and and stuff happen or hold back the rain when if I wouldn't speak I want I want to talk to I want to talk to David I want to see what it was like to be the king, the man after God's own heart. I want to talk to Daniel. I want to see what it was like to be down in the lion's den and know the, the, the lions wouldn't eat me. I want to talk to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, know what it was like, and, ta- and names named all of these Old Testament prophets. I can't wait to one day get to be in heaven and ask them, what was it like? And he said, and I began to think about it for just a second. He said, you know what? I think it's going to turn around. I think when we get to heaven, you and I get to heaven, you know what I think is going to happen? I think these Old Testament saints those heroes of the faith, I think they're going to come running to us. And you know what they're going to want to know? What was it like to have the living God, the creator of the world, living in you to be able to go into his presence in a room and sing praises to him, to have that Holy Spirit, the Holy God living and breathing in you and and making decisions for you and guiding you, loving you. And man, you can sense him all in you. What would that be like? Men, they want to sit and hear from us because we've got something they didn't have. So right here, right now, we have God speaking to us, directly to us through his Holy Spirit. Whether you're saved or not, that Spirit is speaking to you about your salvation experience, that you need him. Man, if you're at home, you need to listen to him. If you're here today, you need to listen to him. He's speaking to you to come to know him as, as, his, as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but man, this stuff you're talking about today is it's heavy, and I, I, I need some help. But listen, we want to help you. We want you to commit your heart to, to being and expecting from your family what God expects from them, that you can be what God expects from you right here, right now. Because we're going to stand before God. We're going to stand before Him. We're going to give an account for the spiritual well-being of those He's placed in our authority. Boy, I want to offer Him up. Would you do that today? Whatever you need, we want to pray for you. If you'll call the church, someone will be listening. To, want to listen to you and pray with you. Whatever it is, would you come today? Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are. At this time, our opportunity to respond. So, Lord, we turn it over to you and we ask that you move today. You move today. Thank you for the privilege we have of being able to to just, just sense you. Thank you for our children. And, Father, thank you for the responsibility you place on us as parents, as adults. And yes, even as a church, to reach kids for Jesus. Father, whatever needs to happen today, would you work it? Speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask you to stand. We're going to sing you at home.